Hi, I'm Ty with AC Service Tech, and today we're going to discuss the burners in relation to a gas furnace. Now, these burners are essential for proper operation of our furnace, so we need to make sure that we maintain and service them correctly. Now, these burners have two essential jobs. One is it needs to mix the fuel and the air together to have proper combustion. Number two, it directs the flame in the direction we want it to go, which is inside of that heat exchanger. Now, as that gas flows inside of our manifold, it's a very small amount of gas pressure. For natural gas, it's typically 3.5 inches of water column. To give you reference, it takes 28 inches of water column just to have one PSI. For propane, it's anywhere from 10 to 13 inches of water column. Now, it goes by manufacturer specification, but just to give you an idea, that very small amount of pressure. But that very low amount of pressure comes to our spud, and in that spud has a hole drilled in it we call an orifice. And that orifice allows that gas pressure to increase in velocity. It's the Venturi effect. Going through that very small hole increases the velocity and shoots that gas inside of our burners. Now, as that gas is being shot inside of our burners, it creates a pressure differential, which allows it to pull oxygen in from the sides. That's the Bernoulli's principle. And as it's shooting that gas into the side, we're pulling the oxygen we need in. To give you an idea, if it takes one cubic foot of natural gas, we're going to be pulling in 10 cubic foot of oxygen into the burner to have it burn correctly. For propane, one cubic foot of propane is going to take 25 cubic foot of air to burn. Now, it's a lot more cubic foot of air to burn that propane, but also the propane has higher velocity, a little higher pressure. So as it's shooting that gas in, we're able to pull that air into the sides. Now, it's important that we have the proper amount of air to have complete combustion. If we don't have the proper amount of air, we end up having soot and carbon buildup, and it ends up ruining that heat exchanger. So it's essential that we keep the inside of these burners clean. We want to make sure there's no bugs, spider webs, dust, uh, rust, anything else that can slow that down, as as well as the orifice as well. I've seen before bugs and rust get clogged up in that orifice. We're not shooting the right amount of gas in there, so we have the improper air fuel mixture. So keeping that clean is going to be essential. Now the second job of these burners is to direct the flame and where we want it to go. The modern style is what we call in-shot burners. A lot of people call them jets, but it's able to direct that flame into the heat exchanger or into those heat exchanger tubes. We want to make sure that flame is burning inside that tube correctly. If we get this burner out of adjustment, it can start burning against the side of the heat exchanger and that causes premature failure. On some of the older style, we have these stamped burners and the flame actually burned upwards inside the heat exchanger. And that flame needed to burn correctly inside the heat exchanger for proper draft. If these burners were turned in the wrong direction, they would blow that flame or direct that flame against the side of the heat exchanger, and that's what we call a flame impingement, and that would cause the heat exchanger to wear out prematurely. We also had these ribbon-style heat exchangers that had these nice long flames inside, and then we also had upshot burners, where we, a lot of times with manufactured homes or some of the older burners, they had just one flame and it'd shoot up against a diversion plate and had just one giant flame burning. But that flame needs to make sure it's burning openly in the heat exchanger and not impinging against the metal because that causes not only incomplete combustion, but premature heat exchanger failure. Now, typically we'll ignite the burners on one side, but that flame needs to carry across all of the burners so that they're all igniting correctly. Otherwise, we're gonna have gas flowing on one side and it's gonna build up and we could have a small flame rollout or a backdraft, which is why you wanna always stand to the side when a furnace first ignites. So if we think about these burners, if I ignite this one, I also have to carry it to the next one. On the sides, we have these crossover tubes. On these in-shot burners, we have this little bit of extra metal on the side that extra metal carries it to the next burner and then the next burner and then the next burner and then the next burner. On the modern furnaces with the in-shot burners, we have the flame sensor on the opposite side of where we ignite it so that we know that we have flames all the way across. But if these get out of adjustment, in other words, they get turned one way higher than the other, these don't line up. And if they don't line up, it's not properly carrying that flame across, and you'll end up with a flame rollout as soon as that ignites. And we want to prevent that. On some of the older furnaces, they had the same thing with these little crossover tubes. And if this got out of adjustment, they wouldn't line up correctly, and it wouldn't carry the flame through all of the burners, and there'd be that flame rollout. Now, there were some of them that had a solid set where you were not able to adjust them. They were mounted securely, where was able to carry that flame all the way across, while others we could pull each individual burner out individually. 
Now when I do maintenance, I always want to check to see, is there any kind of rust inside of here? So I usually use a mirror, I look inside of there and I check for rust on the end of the in-shot burners. So before we turn this furnace on, we're just gonna put our mirror up in here and we're gonna inspect and see what is the condition of these burners. So here as we put the mirror through here, we can see that these are in really good shape. We don't see any kind of rust in there and that's a great, that's really what we wanna see. Now if this cabinet where the furnace is located is located in an area with outside air, such as an outdoor closet or in a garage or in a wet climate, these will a lot of times be more rusty than they are if they're inside like this one's located. Here we can see that burner is in really good shape. We don't see any rust on there and that's exactly what we want when we're looking at these furnaces. We wanna make sure it's in good shape and also that they're lined up. We can see the crossover tubes are lined up and that's exactly what we want. We don't see any kind of cobwebs in there. It's all clean. Well, I was gonna also look in this side. If we look in here, we can inspect. And if you see that screw in the center, that is specifically for a propane furnace. That screw allows that gas and the air to mix better so it has the proper flame that it's designed for. We can see that there's a lot of dust in here. So what we're gonna do is either use CO2 or nitrogen, or we can use like a little paintbrush and we can clean all of those up. We also make sure that we inspect these spuds and orifices make sure those are all in really good shape. If I see rust, I'm gonna pull that off. I'm gonna use a wire brush and clean those. Once we have rust, we wanna make sure that we get that rust cleaned up so we have proper operation of this system. What I typically like to do is remove the burner cover plates. Now, every model is gonna be different. This is just this particular model. We're gonna take this burner plate out of the way and it gives us access to the screws for the individual burner. Here we can see there's a substantial amount of rust on these burners. So we'll make sure we get those cleaned up. I'm gonna grab my wire brush here and we'll just start brushing away. We don't wanna get these grooves in the side because we want those transfer tubes to be nice and clean so we have proper flame all the way across to the next burner. You could also get some pipe cleaner type wire brushes that you can get inside when it's needed. Most of the time I find that it's rusted just right here on this very edge. And also it's important to clean this for proper flame rectification, especially the burner that's right in front of the flame sensor. If this gets really rusted up, that can give you improper flame reading. So I also wanna look inside and we see the inside of here. We're nice and clean. We don't have any kind of dirt or debris in there. And that's what we want to make sure it's nice and clean. Here we can see the one that we cleaned and also the original one where it was nice and rusted up. And we can also see those crossover tubes. We line them up how much more space we have on the one that's cleaned versus the one that's rusty. So that can affect how this furnace lights and burns. So when we put these on, we wanna make sure that they're connected really well onto the spud that supports it. So that orifice is lined up inside the burner and then we can put our screws back in. And we also wanna check right here to make sure that our crossover flame is lined up and that crossover tube is lined up correctly so that we have the proper ignition sequence from one side all the way to the other. On these old style burners, we had to pull the burner completely out. We had to vacuum out the heat exchanger to get all the rust out, inspect it for cracks, and then we used a wire brush across all of these individual tubes to make sure it was burning effectively and clean. On these stamp steel burners, we can see how the burner's tubes run this way, right and left, back and forth. So we wanna go with it in that same exact direction when you start out. Now this one is severely rusted, that's a red flag. I don't wanna check to see what's going on inside that system, but just to give you an example, we're gonna to try to clean this anyway. So I'm just gonna take and go right along with those burners. Now some people do prefer to use some power tools by doing this, but uh, the old way is just simply a wire brush, just like this. You also make sure you're wearing a mask when you're doing this, because if you notice all that debris coming out of there, you're gonna be breathing that in, and you do not wanna be breathing in rust particles. Now you can see this one is really severe. Even all that time we spent on just this one section, we still have a lot of rust there. It's shinier rust, but there's still a lot more there. So we really need to use a power tool on this, one of these wire brush wheels on this. And anytime using a wire brush, make sure you're wearing safety glasses because these threads can really fly off and they can get stuck in your eye. But you can see it's gonna take a lot of time to get some cleaned up. There was a severe amount of rust. And after you get done cleaning it, a lot of times you can just 
tap on that and we can see that we got a significant amount of rust out of there just in that one section. So you can imagine how much rust is on this entire burner length. Now on this ribbon burner, we can see it's a little different. This particular one is galvanized, so it's not rusted nearly as bad. There's just little bitty points of rust. Because the burner runs along in this direction in a ribbon, we wanna make sure that we use the wire brush in that same manner. Then we'd also wanna make sure that we use some kind of nitrogen, CO2, or compressed air to blow these out to make sure there's nothing blocking uh, any of the gas and gas air mixture coming out of this so the flame's burning properly. And as we turn it on its end, we can see that we do have a lot more rust coming out of there. Now this particular one's the adjustable type. Now we used to adjust them where they were blue with just a little bit of yellow tips on it, but really you need to do a combustion analysis so that we make sure that we have the proper air fuel mixture. But this one is the ribbon burner and this one is the stamped burner. But when you put it back in, it was essential that we made sure that they were aligned so that we direct the flame where we wanted it properly in that heat exchanger. Now I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you stand to the side and that furnace ignites because the flame could roll out, especially if they're not lined up correctly or there's a problem with the heat exchanger or there's a problem with these burners themselves. So by standing to the side, if there is a flame rollout, it will come out and usually go back in and you're nice and protected. It will be shocking the first time you see it, we want to make sure that you're safe. I have had a situation where it happened before. I did cut a corner. I was standing in front of it. It rolled out and it did singe some of my eyebrows. We want to make sure you avoid that, which is also another good point of why it's important to wear safety glasses. So I'm making sure we have the proper gas pressure from the manufacturer, making sure that we do combustion analysis. So we know that that furnace is burning correctly and making sure that all of these burners are lined up correctly cleaned inside, we can make sure that system lasts a long time for the customer, and it's gonna be also safe for you, the service technician. And if you wanna learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out some of the free articles, quick tips, and quizzes at acservicetech.com. Have a great day, never stop learning.